the um, conversation going with one of the partners that we have here. Uh, feel free to also write it in the chat or you can also type it in yourselves in like the challenges section. We would welcome it to be kind of a collaborative space. So, um, and also the speakers for today um, have written down their contacts in that resource section of our note sheet. So feel free to check it out. So just a quick little informa uh, information on um, what is an SIS, um, because we have a wide variety. We have some people who are still developing schools, some people who have been experienced in schools, very familiar with an SIS. Um, an SIS is a student information system, um, and there are various platforms. The um, On the left side is kind of like what you do with it, right? You can do enrollment data, demographics, WISE ID, outcomes, and you use it with, this is very, um, very broad strokes, just so we can allow time for it. And then you use it for um, reporting uh, and uh, through DPI quality review reporting. Same thing for um, our SPED platforms. Uh, SPED platforms are used for entering um, special education state LEA reports, federal statewide reports, um, school performance reports, and then you can use the WISE data portal to use your platform to share out that data. Um, some additional platforms um, that you'll kind of hear some about. This was kind of like um, our first time doing this. So we have some platforms and resources available um, as people find interest and share what they're looking for a little bit more, we can maybe provide a, another space for this. But like teacher tracking is one with educator effectiveness um, and student tracking in a more diverse sense of maybe there's some work around um, career and technical education, work-based, um, specific behavior ones. Um, and there's just so many different options and you can see that reflected in, we did a survey uh, as we sent this information out to people and you can see the SIS, um, the, mo the most common one is Skyward. Again, this was not a hugely representative sample. We'd had 16 respondents reply in Wisconsin. So in different states, it could look different but we have Skyward as a popular SIS and we don't have that much variation within Skyward. We have JMC who will be able to talk to us today, Power School Infinite Campus, but you definitely see a more variety in other um, platforms. So in your LMS, your learning management system. So there was, um, you can see some here. Um, these might be some that you use in your school or thinking about using in a school that you're um, currently looking to launch. Um, and you can also see the same thing around that reporting. Um, there's some variety in what platform schools use around um, to share and report spend. Um, some other things that we had, we also asked. Five minutes. Food is out of here. You don't eat in here. Maybe we can mute that person. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, we have a platform for educator effectiveness. Um, this has also had a wide variety of platforms that schools use. Um, and some of schools also listed too, but here you'll, you'll see them represented in just like one option. Um, but this was, uh, again, a lot of options. So you have options as schools. And lastly, we asked kind of like a general question of like, what are some other platforms that you use and for what? And you got to see some really uh, a lot of variety in what type of resources a platform schools use to help them with their student, uh, their LMS, SIS, um, projects, uh, something internal amongst staff. You have some really cool, neat options. So some of these you might be familiar with, some of them might be new that you can also look into. So we want to really jump right into it. And we originally started this with kind of uh, getting selecting an SIS um, and JMC is a little bit smaller option. And typically for uh, district schools, you will probably use what your district is already using. Um, and those tend to be a little bit more expensive options that is shared financially across the schools. So JMC is one of the options and this is kind of why we evolved it into selecting a platform in general. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick it over to JMC. So, hey. Paul, go ahead. Can you hear me okay? Yep, you're good. Great. First of all, thanks for hosting this. I, on behalf of everybody, I just want to tell you, and that's a great introduction to see those graphs was really helpful. 
uh, as a way to just kind of level set what we're trying to do today and how we can get in there and talk about this. So I am Paul Freed. I'm with uh, JMC. Um, one of my specialties is helping new charter schools get up and going. And so I love to talk to new charter schools. Um, uh, we, the chart, the, the independent charter school movement in Minnesota is huge. And so I talk to, uh, dozens of them every year to get them going. And I give everybody the same pitch of what you want to look for in your student information system, whether you're using JMC or whatever it might be, these are the five things you want to get going for year one success. And what I tell folks is that, you know, you, you want to have these things up and going day one, if not a month before day one. And I'll talk about in my next four minutes, why each of those are important here as well. First of all, this all goes without saying you want great tech support, right? You want somebody that can answer your questions because the charter school is asked to do all the things that a large uh, public school is asked to do, but you want to make sure to do them with the support for somebody to help answer your questions. So tech support, it's not on there as a feature, but really important. So here's the five things you want to get going right away. And I always even tell charter schools to sometimes ignore the other things in their SIS to make sure these are going. So number one, you want to make sure you can easily enroll students right away. When kids come in, you don't want to put them in a spreadsheet. You don't want to put them in a Google Google Doc because then you just got to dual enter them into your student information system. Get your student information system up and going. Get your students, get your parents into your student information system right away because then you can use the valuable tools in your SIS to communicate. And that is number two. And I cannot overemphasize the importance of using voice, text, and emailing to reach out to your families on a regular basis. Because just like, because they signed a piece of paper saying they're going to come to your school on the first day of school doesn't mean they're going to put the kid on your bus to get to your school or drop them off. You want to send a voice, text, and email at least once a week. I would send a text message once a week. I would send a voicemail every two weeks. And you want to get going right away in June to remind them, hey, you're getting this message because you signed up for our school. Come to this open house. Come get a tour. Come fill out the sheet of paper. Make up reasons to have contact with your students. Because if the kids don't show up, you're not going to get your school going. The way you get them going to your school is to remind them that they signed up for your school and then to give them, to start a relationship with them as well. And especially those voice messages can help start a, um, a relationship because they'll hear your voice saying, hey, come to our school on July 13th. Come to our school on July 27th. Your bus is coming in two weeks. Reach out to our school. So that's number two. Number three is scheduling attendance. Of course, you want to get schedules in there. You want attendance. You want to be able to do report cards. But you want to do it in July so that when the teachers who are joining your school, which is a brand new school, can come in. And when they have teacher training, they can sit down with your SIS trainer and see their kids. With that option the functionality here, when you add the option. Oops, no, there we go. Um, so, sorry, somebody unmuted there. You want to make sure to, um, um, oh, we're on the wrong slide too. It's just so you want to go back one slide there. You want to be able to um, schedule them so that when teachers are there, they feel like, oh, this is just a normal school. It's a new school, but I can see my kids. I can see my schedule. I can email my kids, all those things. So make sure scheduling set up attendance is set up. And so then that first day of school is just a normal school. I always tell charter schools, you want parents and teachers and staff to feel like this is just a normal school, even though you're brand new. The fourth thing is, and I'm going to hit my five minutes, just so you know, I might even have a few seconds extra. I'm, I'm excited about this. Food service. You want to be able to charge meals on the first day of school. Get everything set up in July August is busy. So when the kids come through the lunch line, they type in their lunch number, they scan their card, they do a fingerprint, whatever. And you're charging meals to do all of your clicks reporting, all of your state reporting to be able to do that. And then the last thing is state reporting. You want to choose an SIS. Of course, all the ones that you saw there do state reporting, right? But you want to make sure to get training over the summer that is valuable so that you, when you start the year in July and August, you're putting all the information in right away so you don't have to backfill it for state reporting later. So I, I, I tell folks, you can take these five to the bank. If you've got these five set, uh, set up for the first day of school and before, that will help you be successful in your first year using your student information system. So take it away. Thank you, Paul. That was beautiful. Yes. Um, and as you saw from the chart, too, there are some schools that use JMC um, for other things beyond um, their SIS. They might also use it for other platforms as well. So if you're interested in learning more, just as for the rest, 
um, hop into their breakout room, ask some more clarifying questions and set up a time and uh, to meet with the JMC team and get those answered. Let's go on to our next one, um, which is your learn, uh, learning management systems. Um, and here we have Headrush. So uh, go ahead, Shane. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Shane Krakowski. I'm a co-founder of Headrush. I'm a non a former non-traditional teacher uh, working with uh, high school and older students. And I do live in the city of Milwaukee. And my children, my three daughters, uh, have gone uh, go to a charter school. So Headrush is a learning management system. We serve innovative middle school and high schools, primarily charter and independent schools. So we are somewhat intentionally ignoring traditional schools. And these are a subset of example of the 106 schools that we serve today. Also proud to be working with Jobs for America's graduates. They serve 70,000 students across the country through their organization. And then also we're very proud that the XQ Schools Foundation has selected Headrush and is working with us on a couple of their initiatives. In case you don't know, XQ Schools is uh, Laurel, Lauren Powell Jobs Foundation, which is the widow of Steve Jobs of Apple Computer. As you can imagine, he and she are not very fond of traditional learning. So we're proud to have won through a competitive process to be partnering with them. So that's who we serve. Uh, what makes us unique here is three things. Um, one, I'll just talk through it. Sorry, the video's not working, yeah. So uh, to oversimplify it, think of post-it notes organized in groups, digital. So that allows for a lot of flexibility in design as well as supports project-based learning. The other piece is we have a very flexible, agile, competency-based assessment model, which allows standards-based grading, competency-based assessment, as well as um, credit, uh, credit tracking. And then the last piece is just our unique dashboards and reports. We're whole student. So um, rather than just focusing siloed on content, we help schools report out uh, more of those non-tangible skills as well as meta, uh, the metacognition kind of aspects. So uh, that's what we are about. Um, in the slide, you'll notice that there is a link to a number of quick two minute videos that you can watch to get a sense of who we are. And also uh, wanted to promote that we have our projects pedagogy and play conference up in the Twin Cities um, in a few weeks. So be a great chance to meet um, some innovative educators that also use Headrush but also are doing some innovative models. So um, that that's head rush learning. Uh, I guess this slide just talks to how we support project-based learning and experiential learning, uh, the continuum of that from teacher-led to team-led all the way to uh, student-led projects and uh, student design learning. So a little bit out of order there, but uh, hopefully that gives you the gist. Uh, more than willing to schedule time to connect, as well as if you're uh, in the area, in the Milwaukee area, uh, more than willing to grab a cup of coffee or connect otherwise. Oh, beautiful. You are a minute short. Sorry about that, uh, Shane. They didn't let me play the video. Um, no but there are links and like uh, we have links, uh, the slideshow and the notes are also linked in the chat and we'll follow up with an email too with all the stuff. Um, so um, let's go ahead and go to Seeds. All right. Hi, um, I, my name is Christine Klumpers. I am the Seeds for Schools um, product manager. Um, You'll see in our slide, it says student service for schools. We actually are going through a, a, a name change, a branding change, because we are expanding. So um, Seeds for Schools has been around for over 20 years, and it was predominantly IEP focused, so special ed focused in the state of Wisconsin. Um, about three years ago, we added a new um, component 
called ADAPT for schools, which was around 504 plans. Um, and then we were um, asked to expand again because of, of what we do. So we actually decided to um, create one web application, which is Student Service for Schools. And we will be um, releasing ELs for schools in the next couple of weeks, which will be um, built around um, English learner plans. Um, and then shortly after that, we'll, we will be releasing ISP for schools, which is going to include things like um, gifted and talented plans and plans ar around reading with Act 20. Um, so we are expanding very quickly and lots of new things um, to share. However, if I go back to our roots, which is Seeds, um, it is an IEP software um, built around special education. And the thing that makes us stand out and um, I think has about a third of the state of Wisconsin selecting Seeds as their IEP software is that um, it was created um, by CESA 6, who is um, actually the owner of of Seeds. Um, I didn't have enough room on my name to add CESA 6 to the end of it. <laughs> so I am a CESA 6 employee um, and Seeds belongs to CESA 6. But um, we um, we created it 20 plus years ago um, as special educators who needed a, a system that worked better for us and was a time saver. Um, and I am a director of special ed and student services. Um, I've been actively in districts up until this year. So I know what I need the system to do um, as a director of student services. Um, and our team is made up of educators. So we're educators who create these systems. We're educators who know what it needs to do. Um, e our new EL module was um, co-created by our EL um, folks at CESA 6. So we we tap into those um, the professionals who know what uh, needs to be done. So um, this new module which, or this new application is really exciting because um, the plans will be able to communicate, have a centralized system um, for the students and the users. Um, and there is so much overlap to be had, and I'm really excited to, to get started on that, learning a lot about the new reading law around Act 20 and what components um, actually will kind of feed along all the modules. So we're able to kind of uh, make those plans work best and efficiently across the board for all students. So um, I'm not even gonna take five minutes, but if this sounds interesting to you, you're gonna give me a call and then I will definitely talk your ear off about what we have and I will be excited to share it with you. So thank you for your time. Yeah, perfect. And we also saw um, CESA 6 and I guess formerly SEEDS also represented in what platform schools are already using. So there are some kind of um, strong platforms represented in here in this time. Yes, That's and cool. I know you'll be talking with CESA 6 later on. John and I saw each other yesterday, so I know that he will be speaking about effectiveness later on. So I'm giving a little preview for John. <laughs> exactly. Um, with that, we're going to go on to our other option, another platform for SPED, and we have SPED Forms. Hi, I'm Diane McCarran. Um, I am the Director of Services for SPED Forms. SPED Forms started uh, about 20 years ago back in Minnesota, and the, the schools get to make choices. And so now all schools in Minnesota, except for seven, have chosen SPED Forms. We have the special education due process forms. We have 504 forms, health forms, multi-tiered systems of support forms, and MA forms. We would say, why would you want to switch to SPED forms? Well, we have simple dashboards with lots of notification. Um, intuitive to use. Our teachers like the visuals that are available to them. It's really simple to manage. So for charter schools, we serve most of the charter schools in Minnesota. Once set up, the initial setup is complete, it's usually run by your special education staff. There's rarely a need to, to use or to connect with your tech staff. You want to next page? It's also very personalizable. It's personalizable at the user level. You can create your own profile. You can create your own goals and objectives, although we have hundreds of SMART goals within the system. 
You can create your own team member list so that all you have to do is click and choose. You don't have to remember all the, how to spell all those names and those titles when you're sending out notices. You can create your own evaluation assessment tools forms. We've got hundreds of criteria available related to all of the assessment tools that are that are listed. Um, and so that, but you can create your own if if there's something that you use uniquely. We have an MA group set up and we also have credentials. So you can create things on the personal level. You can also create things very much on the district or the school level. So if you go in there, you can see that you can create, can we go to the next page? There we go. We can, you can create drop-down lists. We have hundreds of drop-down lists that are story starters, particularly for those newer teachers that this is, this is, we may have unlicensed teachers or we may have teachers uh, that are on a tiered licensure system. And so we've got lots and lots of drop downs that you as a district or as a school um, can use ours. You can create your own, you can create your own goals, you can create your own templates and form letters. So this is very personalizable by district or by school. We also have drop downs that enhance efficiency. With all of these, this just gives that support to your staff. And it also is ones that have been designed by your district over and over again. You don't have to retype. It's all there. We also have efficient templates and we have um, e-signatures, which is free and part of the system. We also have what we call our student history. And so all documents that are created in SPED forms or any documents that you've received from other schools or other agencies can be uploaded and put into history so that the in our in Minnesota, having all of the district can quickly share information from district to district if a child has moved. But also it also has all of that information there for your administrators or for your teachers so that they it's easy for them to see all of that information. We have lots and lots of built-in reports. We have educator reports and we also have administrator reports. And so that's gathering data from within the system. We also are EDI certified by DHS so that you we can submit your Medicaid files we also have a very rigorous data security system. We are HIPAA compliant. We offer multi-factor authentication and you can integrate with single sign-on. But here's the magic of SPEDforms. We listen to our users. SPEDform was designed by, by educators and it grew across Minnesota organically. We convene groups monthly to provide access and advice and information that helps us determine our priorities and enhancements. We have teachers and providers of related services. We have administrators. They all play a critical role in making SPED forms better. And every time we get a new district, we say we get better because they offer us new and exciting ideas. And lastly, the most important thing is our support. We've got online educator guide. We've got a very rigorous YouTube channel with over a hundred videos there. We've got frequently asked documents. We host what we call our Thursdays at three. We have a topic every Thursday and people are invited to join and learn from each other. We districts can sub submit support requests and we provide lots of training. So why would you wanna to move to SPED forms? It's simple to use. It's personalizable, it's efficient, it's data-driven, and most of all, we provide great support. We're excited to join, to, to move into Wisconsin. The reason we are here is because we had, just, we had administrators that lived on the, the Minnesota side. They moved over to Wisconsin and said, please, please come over to Wisconsin. And so we're happy to be here. Um, and, and we look forward to, to working with more of you. Thanks, Diane. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and keep talking about SPED and going to our last one, um, Go Idea. Um, we'll talk about their platform and resources that they have available for schools. 
Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Steve Letizia with Go Solutions. Uh, today, I'm highlighting our IEP software, uh, Go IDA. It's formerly known as o known as Oasis. So, if you're familiar with Oasis, it's still the same great software. Uh, but our software was initially developed over 30 years ago in Franklin, Wisconsin, and we continue to call Wisconsin home today. I myself live in Milwaukee, so I'm a short drive away from all of you. Uh, a few years ago, we merged with a company called Go Solutions. Um, and that's when we decided to change the name from Oasis to Go IDA. So um, as Go Solutions, we've expanded into 10 more states and are proud to offer a wide array of student services software, including Section 504, English Learner, and Medicaid reimbursement, including uh, in addition to our IEP software. Uh, we interface with every major student information system. You know, we, we've worked with them all, JMC, Skyward, PowerSchool, Infinite Campus, whatever you use. Uh, we can work with them to pull in the student and guardian information on a nightly basis so you don't have to maintain multiple databases of information. Um, we also are state reporting certified, so uh, we can send all of our IEP information directly out of our system and attach it to the enrollment record of the state. And then the um, student information systems have a way to download our data back into their system for an easy and seamless flow of data. Uh, I'd say one thing our districts really love about our system is how customizable it is. Uh, this allows us to provide a software solution for a wide variety of district types, big and small. So we work with some big districts in the state like Madison, Green Bay, but we also work with a lot of charter schools. Um, most of the charter schools in Milwaukee choose to, to use our software and, um, and the customizable factable factor of our software is the reason we can do that. You know, we can, we can have a solution for big districts and small districts alike. Um, the Go IDA software and features a dynamic dashboard reminder system, smart form technology, built in from uh, compliance checks, as well as other time saving tools to ensure staff are filling out required forms in a timely manner and also doing so compliantly. And compliance is uh, the, you know, the name of the game when, when it comes to our system. We want to make sure that, again, they're filling out them in a timely manner, but also filling them out correctly and you're not getting uh, dinged on your, your assessments. Uh, but I would say what truly sets us apart is our customer support team. Uh, that's been a, a core value of ours since we started 30 years ago, um, and it's going to continue to be a core value of ours as we continue to expand. Uh, but we assign you a designated account manager uh, who will work with you to make sure you're fully trained, answer any questions you may have, meet with you monthly, uh, whatever you need, they're, they're there to help you along the way. Uh, we view ourselves as more than just a, you know, forms software where you log in and fill out the forms. We, we really do view ourselves as a consulting partner with our districts. Um, and all the enhancements we make just come from district feedback. So uh, when we do enhance the software, it, it always comes from just districts, you know, asking, you know, hey, is this something we can do? Uh, it would be nice if you had this. And that's where all of our enhancements come from. We also have hold yearly user groups uh, where all of our districts come together and network and and we get a lot of good, great information from the from those uh, from those user groups. Um, I'd love to learn more about all of your districts uh, for your and your goals for your special education department um, to see how we can help you out. Um, like I said, I live in Milwaukee, so I'd be happy to stop by any districts that are interested. I'm also going to be in the breakout session, so feel free to pop in and ask any questions. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Steve. Thanks to all the SPED platforms that we have. I mean, there's also some additional ones, but these are some that are definitely used across the state of Wisconsin. Definitely. Um, if you are looking to enhance or even just ask your current platform a clarifying question, hop into their um, breakout room and set up an, a time to chat or have them visit and um, see what works best for your school. Let's go ahead and switch it towards educator effectiveness um, and learn about what are some options that we have with that. And we'll switch it over to See Me Teach. Hi, um, I'm Chris Perenboom, and I'm here representing See Me Teach. Um, in response to the frustration that many current models used for classroom observations have, we have experienced and we have heard from other um, teachers and administrators, our team of educators and researchers tried to reimagine how teacher observations could be accomplished in a way that's meaningful to teachers while staying simple for administrators and beneficial for students. Um, and we came up with a process that fosters growth, collaboration, and is founded on something that we call high resolution data. We offer a powerful observation development tool that has a qualitative mode for comments and feedback and a unique quantitative mode that collects high resolution data that provides instant analysis of this data 
which gives robust indicators of teaching effectiveness that we can use for feedback for coaching and to um, help optimize growth for teachers. Um, <clears throat> a common complaint that we've experienced and that's been voiced by other um, teachers and administrators is that observations sometimes are vague or therefore lack meaningful data that can impact the teachers um, or the observers. And so the goal um, of our app is to focus on these concrete indicators and generate data that's clear and specific and intentionally incorporating the teachers themselves into the observation process in order to generate meaningful um, collaborative discussions based on this data and how the classroom is, the things that are happening in the classroom. Um, the app encourages collaboration among a closed group of four users. Each member can conduct their own observation as well as view the observations of their other team members. Um, and all the comments in it can be made asynchronously in order to sort of help out with communication across a district or across a school. Um, and my favorite thing about the app is that as soon as you are done completing an observation, the app instantly creates visuals, graphs, charts, and other, um, other such that, uh, show and indicate the things that you were trying to collect and the data that you've seen. Um, on the next slide, you can see a, a snapshot of just two of the things that we have in our app. So the top half is our qualitative mode. Um, if you're using a pre-recorded lesson, so like a video of a classroom, you can link all of the data that you're collecting directly to the actual video. So you have that video evidence paired right there. Um, and you can have a running record of comments between all of the different users that you have in your group. And then the bottom indicates um, just one of the plethora of screens from the quantitative data mode, which allows users to identify some or all of the events or interactions that happen within a classroom between teachers and students, between students and their peers. And this provides, again, clear visualizations of heat maps as an example of where students are um, participating in the classroom how often students are talking or um, participating or answering questions, asking questions, et cetera, um, where students are on task or off task with what frequency. And so from this, you can take any of this data and use it where you want or where you need in order to help foster good um, growth and communication with you and the teacher. Um, our next page. So the benefits of CME Teach that we've experienced are having data accessible to all team members, instantly um, post-feedback is just a widely helpful for everyone involved. Um, the teachers can use that feedback for coaching, for self-reflection, as indicators of growth for themselves in order to plan for the future. Um, students benefit because reflective teachers just in general create better learning environments. And coaches and administrators benefit because there are established markers workers that they can use to allow setting targets for growth and moving forward with these teachers that's less abstract and more concrete about what they're seeing. Next slide. Um, so our CME Teach team right now is offering interested schools or school systems the opportunity to learn more and experience using this tool at a free or significantly reduced cost and witness firsthand how the tool can add significant value to their observations um, and the benefits of infusing data into the feedback and coaching process. So again, afterwards in the breakout sessions, I'd be happy to discuss you know, the details of any of these three pilot options. We have some that are very um, basic and non-committal that go all the way to us wrapping you and a whole system or a big group of teachers into using this. Um, and so we'd be happy to discuss with you, know, you or set up a time to come meet with more coworkers or others in your organization um, and figure out what we can work, how we can work for you and how we can make this beneficial to what you're um, currently Moving on. So we have our contact information is attached on the other document too that you can send up. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Yes, let's keep going with educator effectiveness. And this is pronounced to know me. So let's go ahead and Elias, I think you are to know me. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, wonderful to be here. Hello, I am Elias Eldon. I am the product architect at To Know Me. Now we have been referred to present here today by one of our customers in Wisconsin. And we also have a partnership with CESA purchasing with a preferred rate for district in Wisconsin. You know, it kind of feels like a critical time, but not yet. It feels like a critical time when 55% uh, of educators are considering leaving the profession. And so To Know Me offers a solution to improve 
the professional learning experience and its effectiveness for teachers and for the administrators that support teachers. Because when successful, this process improves the teaching practice, job retention, all the way down to student outcomes. Uh, so allow me first to introduce you to the Tonomi solution, and then we'll quickly talk about its impact. Next slide, please. So Tonomi is a lightweight cloud platform for teachers using a structured framework that unifies everything together. We partner with the leading framework authorities in educator effectiveness, including the Danielson Group, the National Standards for Quality, uh, ISTE, and others to serve as the digital side of, of these powerful frameworks. So if you're a teacher, you begin with a self-reflection to unpack the framework. Update this campaign. So as I said, as a teacher, you start out by unpacking the framework for yourself. Then this is followed by an awareness summary that to clarify strengths and areas for growth. Administrators' observations and feedback complement the awareness summary uh, by uh, for each component of the framework. And as you scroll down, your personalized learning plan integrates this feedback from administrators with self-reflection to suggest tailored resources from the library with hundreds of vetted options aligned to the framework. So this process for teachers is designed to be efficient, allowing teachers to see tangible results quickly. And uh, for administrators, Tonomi shifts the focus towards strategic data collection and decision-making. The admin portal provides deep insights into the teaching practices and the impact of professional learning activity. And it's all supported by a rich catalog of resources vetted by our framework partners. And, and last, administrators can also customize their portals with additional resources rooted in the local community to meet specific needs. Next slide, please. So, Tonomi is reimagining professional learning by shifting from a generic to a personalized learning journey, significantly enhancing teacher effectiveness. The system provides educators with resources three times faster, saving 43% of time otherwise spent searching for appropriate material. And when it comes to observations and feedback for administrators, the structured approach within Tonomi creates a positive culture focused on continuous improvement. And we can see that with data, we can see how personalized support for teachers directly correlates with enhanced effectiveness. Our 2020, 2023 data indicates a 72% improvement in self-reflection results and a 59% improvement based on administrative feedback. Last slide, please. So uh, inviting you to see it all for yourself, you can create your own secure portal at no cost for 30 days with full access, uh, either through the Tunomi website or through CISA purchasing, uh, or visit us at tunomi2gno.me to schedule a proper demo. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go ahead and have our last educator effectiveness effectiveness projects. All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is John Schlunder. I'm a consultant with the CISA 6 Growth and Development Center. And our team really exists to support the effectiveness project evaluation system um, for all of our users across the state. And uh, effectiveness project was developed by CISA 6 along with Dr. James Strong, who's the principal researcher behind the standards um, that are really the foundation of EP. So our team um, really um, exists to work alongside districts across the state and make sure that all the evaluation processes um, support educator growth. Our, our model is really based on continuous improvement practices, and we really promote and believe strongly in empowering educators to be active participants, participants in the evaluation process um, as part of their growth, which then results in success for them as well as for the students they serve. 
And I want to make sure that I point out that EP um, is a DP, DPI approved equivalency model um, on the next slide. Um, underneath the statewide umbrella of educator effectiveness. So with that, we ensure that all of our processes meet the required state statutes and DPI expectations. And along with that, um, our EP systems are fully funded through the state EE grant. And again, charter schools are eligible for that grant um, on an annual basis as well. So then uh, the makeup of our system is designed to uh, support the entire school-wide system. So everyone who works within your schools. So our core systems include the teacher, ed educational specialists and school administrators. Um, if you could just click ahead. Um, so this is, this is our core systems, but then we also offer additional evaluation systems for each of the other employee groups within a, a district. And we can tell you more about that. All these systems are aligned and set up um, and work the, the same way. Um, there's really just three major components that the system is built on. The standards are the expectations um, for um, educator performance. And those are supported by indicators, which are um, really meant to clarify and pro, uh, provide examples of the practices that meet that standard. And then at the end of the evaluation cycle, uh, the performance appraisal rubrics are used to rate the educator and um, measure their effectiveness for that standard. And just to be clear, at the end of the evaluation cycle, each educator receives uh, one rating for each standard. So just six ratings at the end of the cycle. So what are some of the unique features of the effectiveness project? Um, we utilize the frontline education platform. We've partnered with them for many years and that allows us to effectively and efficiently document and house all the information that is collected throughout the, the evaluation cycle. We utilize a rapid cycle feedback observation process, which is designed to provide shorter, more frequent classroom observations, followed by face-to-face -face feedback that are really based on the educator's focus area. Um, so it's meaningful and relevant to the areas they're looking to improve in. And then since the educational specialists, such as counselors, school psychs, uh, therapists and some of those roles that support students beyond the classroom. Um, since those roles are unique, we've developed job specific um, indicators that more align with the work that those folks do. So their evaluation is more meaningful to them and the work that they are actually doing. And then finally, um, we're committed to supporting districts across the state. We have a network of facilitators in each CISA region and um, a help center desk that I would uh, put up against um, any others as far as timeliness. And then our trainings, we moved to a flipped approach where our content is online, followed by networks of cohorts to continue the learning um, with other educators and administrators who use our system. So again, um, we are happy to meet with you at any time. Um, here's some links you can reach out and contact us through a variety of ways. Thank you. Thank you. Let's switch and kind of look at some um, potential alternative additional uh, platforms. And here we have one around student tracking and we have Otis. All right. I think I'm last. So hopefully we all aren't in our food comas from lunch. We have some uh, attention to give here. I'll, I'll be short and brief here as I explain. Otis, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for running this. Nice to connect with everybody. <clears throat> First thing I want to kind of clarify here uh, from the Otis standpoint is we're not a student information system uh, or just isolated to certain segments uh, of students. So as my friend, the other Paul on this call said at the beginning uh, here, you know, Paul and I know each other, as, as Pauls find each other at conferences. We, we just have a way of bonding as Pauls. Uh, but he said, the first thing you know, you're know you gonna wanna do is, is establish a student information system. And he's right. You know We're not gonna do things like uh, registration or enrollment or lunch money or things like that. That foundation of, of operational data uh, is something that you'll get out of a student information system. But what we are is a teaching and learning extension of your student information system. So if you opt to go with JMC, Maybe you've already made these decisions and you use a different SIS. 
we can sync with your student information system to support you to answer probably the biggest question when it comes to, to, to schools and what you do on a daily basis, how are our students performing? And, and we can help you visualize growth in a variety of different ways. So I'm just going to give you a, a short overview of all the different things that we do. Uh, first thing, we can inherit data from all of your different assessment sources. So if not just Wisconsin Forward data, if you use diagnostic benchmarking tools like NWEA, iReady, Renaissance Star, uh, to different platforms, if you can get us data in a spreadsheet, we can inherit that into a plat into our platform and make data visible and actionable to your staff. But from there, we also have ways for your staff members to act on data and interact with our platform to drive student growth, either from a progress monitoring uh, perspective. So not just for students with, with special uh, needs or 504 plans or English language learners, this is for all students. You can create MTSS intervention plans, student goal tracking. You can do IEP tracking. Uh, we have a lot of schools in Wisconsin right now that are planning reading plans aligned to Act 20 based on uh, the legislation that's coming down the pike uh, to show reading growth through our tools here. And then we have a full assessment suite where you can deliver classroom assessments aligned to learning targets, whether you're using state or national standards or custom learning targets. Uh, there's a lot of data that you can get at a classroom level from the various assessments that you deliver directly in Otis, and it flows into a, a really dynamic standards grade book and report card. If you flip to the next slide, I'll show some visuals here. So here's just kind of a general dashboard of all the different uh, types of third-party data tools that we can inherit into the platform. One thing to note is we take this off of your plate. We can upload uh, and display a variety of different scores based on your need, but it's not something that you have to do. You simply either connect us with the tools that we have partnerships with or send us those spreadsheets of reports. If you click to the next slide. All of the reports that you can build are, are actionable and dynamic. Uh, so you can identify students that are maybe uh, falling uh, behind grade level, uh, or you can triangulate data. Who are the kids that have this attendance rate, uh, but uh, this amount of behavior referrals, uh, GPA lower than this, uh, things like that to capture students that maybe uh, could uh, benefit from additional support. Flip to the next slide. We have interactive plans for a number of different things from MTSS support. This is an example of a, a of a mock-up based on a, a work we're doing with the school in Wisconsin around Act 20, where we can flow individual data points from different assessments that you're delivering into one plan. It can also be a place where you're adding more qualitative information, notes, student goals, attachments, uh, things like that as you're working with students along the way. If you flip to the next slide. We have a full assessment suite and we partner with a number of different curriculum providers, but we also have our own item bank of over 98,000 professionally authored items to pick and choose from. We have our own bank of pre-built assessments that can be delivered to students. You of course can create your own dynamic assessments uh, and there are a variety of ways from rubrics to more question and answer formatted assessments. We have over 65 item types. If you click to the next slide. We also partner with a lot of the major curriculum providers out there. So if you utilize any uh, of these curriculum platforms, including some that uh, recently were improved uh, by the state uh, related to Act 20, like Amplify CKLA, Wit and Wisdom, other tools like that, if you use those tools, you can assess them in Otis and have the data flow directly alongside all of your other data sources. And then if you click to my final slide, and then it's all actionable at the assessment level. So you can do some analysis in your PLC groups. Uh, individual classroom teachers can look at item analysis for individual questions down to performance standards. So as you are identifying and linking these items to standards, you can get a breakdown at a standard level how students are performing. So again, a teaching and learning extension uh, for all students to support a number of different things. Uh, if you're interested in learning more, I'd love to learn about you and where you are in your journey, uh, either at the beginning phases of, of developing a, a charter school uh, to maybe uh, you've been doing this for a while and you've kind of been on this journey and, and maybe are running into some of these challenges. I'd love to connect and, and uh, learn more from you and showcase how Otis can maybe help. Thank you. Oh, 
that was my timer. Um, thanks everyone. Um, we are really close to our ending point. Um, what I think we could do is kind of just also just direct people to our our note um uh, note sheet that is.